I was walking down the street in Flagstaff in my own town. I went out of my office to go get a cup of coffee, and a young man stepped in front of me. And I'm a big guy. I, I don't usually get people stepping in front of me and stopping me. He stepped in front of me and he said, tell me about your shirt. I had a picture of Mayor Baba with the white headscarf. It's kind of a famous picture of Baba where he's sitting with the white headscarf and there was a quote underneath. I said, it's Mayor Baba, it's my spiritual master. And he read the quote and then he said, you'd better watch out. Even Sikhs are being killed right now. That's the first time in my life I felt like, wow, this country is becoming like, I almost felt like a sense of fascism. Um, very scary uh, reactions from, you know, Flagstaff is a pretty progressive town in, in Arizona. It's pretty uh, diverse and certainly very liberal. So I was, I was thinking, oh my God. And I remember the quote, I'd like to repeat it because it's, it's important. The quote said, when the word of my love breaks out of its silence and speaks in your heart, telling you who I really am, then you will know that is the real word you have always been longing to hear. Mayor Baba. So I thought, all right, Sikhs are being killed. That's pure ignorance. Um, little boy who's Muslim is being put into a coma by his American classmates. And I'm being stopped on the, sh on the street in Flagstaff for wearing a Mayor Baba shirt. What the hell is going on? And I, uh, it was deeply troubling. Then I went camping down in um, Fossil Creek with my friend Jim. He, he, at the time, he was my best friend. And uh, we sat under the beautiful stars of Flagstaff, Arizona. Uh, it's a dark sky city, so it's, the stars are super bright and beautiful. And campfire and he's like what's going on with you and I said I am really struggling with this you know like all this stuff that's going on in America this was you know September October now of uh, 2001 right after September 11 so he said well what's you know what's really the issue I said that's what I'm trying to figure out you know and the best I can come to is the issue isn't extreme Islam that's not the problem the problem is ignorance there's ignorance everywhere. And how do you address the ignorance? You know, because we can't, I can't focus on extremists. That's not going to, what am I going to do with that? But I can focus on the ignorance. And how do you cure ignorance? Through sharing. You share the beauty, the wisdom, the knowledge of the Eastern faiths. And I said, if I can't find a Muslim, I can share about Islam. I can share about Sufism. But what about Hinduism? What about the Sikhs? What about the Jains? What about the Buddhists? Right? What about all the different faiths that are so beautiful? I was literally hearing people after September 11th say, I know what we should do. We should just bomb them all. Kill them all. You know, like meaning everything from Istanbul, Turkey to, you know. What's different from us? But the East, you know, it was like the East has to go. Just lock, stock, and barrel. Bomb them all. Kill them all. We'll figure it out later. I was hearing people talk like that, and I thought, you know, there's got to be a solution to this. So I decided to approach faith leaders from every tradition, Jewish, like I said, Jain, Sikh, Hindu, um, everybody. And I said, here's my goal, is to share from our heart, from our mind, your experience of your faith, what that faith means, and your journey in that faith. Let the people hear it from you directly so that we can, in some way, um, work against ignorance and work for knowledge and wisdom and beauty. Would you be willing to stand with me side by side, hand in hand, like beads on one string? I called it Eastern Heritage Symposium, Beads on One String. It was February. I wanted to do it near Baba's birthday. It was February 23rd, 2002 that we did this at um, Northern Arizona University in Flagstaff. And it was a full day symposium. We broke for lunch and we had everybody, each individual shared as much as they wanted, some of them up to about an hour, some a little less. And it was fantastic, fantastic. And people then said, you've got to take this on the road. You've got to take this show on the road. And I'm thinking, I've got a wife. I've got, at that time, I had one child. Um, now we have two. I had a full-time job. 
it's great that I should take it on the road. Who's going to support my family, you know? So I knew that there was a need. I knew that there was a um, obvious uh, work to do for Baba re related to beads on one string. But after the symposium, I didn't know how to do that practically. So then I thought, well, I can't take this on the road practically, but I can ask all these presenters, all these faith leaders to write a book with me. That's practical. So I called them back and I said, people want us to do this more and more as time goes by. We were early. We were very early. In February 2002, people were just coming out of shock and we were already presenting. So um, as time went by, people felt it was more needed, not less needed. And they said, then do a book. So we did. Uh, and, and we invited some other um, people to write. Also, Jakob Weintraub joined us, uh, Carl Muller, and other people. So um, that's how the book got started. And um, people have, it's touched many hearts. And I've heard a lot of feedback. And I'm just grateful that Baba allowed us to come together in that way.